Hello po, good afternoon. Uh, welcome po. under the hospital operations track po. So, to give the floor again po sa session chair po natin, uh, may invite uh, Ma'am Gabby. Turn on her camera and <laughs> show her beautiful face. So, thank you po. Uh, one presentation. You can answer your question with the chat box. No, so that we can just call you. We have more time for the uh, question and answer because of the uh, reduced number of speakers. So let's uh, move on to the first presenter, Ms. Janina Rose Arbico of uh, Statistician 2 of Batangas Medical. The paper is Turnaround Time in Batangas Medical Center. Good afternoon. I'm going to present our paper, Turnaround Time of Medical Records and Medical and Birth Certificates Process in Batangas Medical Center. I am Janina Rose Bicol, statistician from Batangas Medical Center. One of the functions of Records Unit of the Health Information Management Section is to prepare medical records. Each process has hospitals with corresponding expected completion time written in the citizen's chart. During the COVID-19 pandemic, an online platform to him Tracker's Facebook page was added as a way of requesting for medical records and certificates to accommodate clients who can physically process the request. The average weekly walk-in requests were reduced. However, the only requests received were in large volume. Some employees have 40-hour compressed schedule when their unreliable documents are still for five days. Based on the summer section survey, Answered by clients of the unit, one of the most common written comment and suggestion was regarding their waiting time. Customer satisfaction is an important parameter in assessing the quality of service, defined as the service which meets or exceeds the expectation of a consumer. Most of the studies regarding client satisfaction concluded that clients expressed dissatisfaction in waiting time. Thus, to have a quality service, the unit determined the turnaround time or length of time it consumes to process birth and medical transactions and identified the process of long waiting time. The general objective was to determine the turnaround time of processing clients' requested documents in HIMSS records unit, specifically to determine the turnaround time of processing each type of certificate and record, to determine the turnaround time of every procedure of different types of certificate and records, to compare the turnaround time of providing certificates and records with the com expected completion time on the citizen's charter and to identify the factors causing delay in processing the requested documents. Sample was randomly selected from all requested medical records, medical legal, confinement, medical, and birth certificates at HIMS records unit for a period of one week. Separate request forms were prepared and numbered for each type of certificate and transaction. And all corresponding numbered request forms have that monitoring sheet attached. Responsible employees filled out the time of their task in the TAT monitoring sheet. TAT of birth and medical walk intersections start when the clients receive the queuing number, while TAT of documents requested online start when the person in charge has seen and sent a standard reply as acknowledgement of the request. Messages of clients sent from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. of a working day will be immediately entertained once received. On the other hand, messages sent beyond working hours will receive the standard reply the following working day. Turnaround time of transaction end when the requested document is ready for use. Data were encoded in plans in Microsoft Excel. Since the TAT distribution is positively skewed, the median and 90th percentile or the 90% completion time were used to determine the TAT for each type of documents and transactions and for each procedure of the processes. One sample median test was used to compare the estimated median TAT with the expected completion time on the citizen's charter. A total of 354 process requests were included in the study, 182 birth certificate transactions, and 172 medical certificates and records. 
Results show that the major threat of requesting and claiming birth certificates were 48 and 13 minutes respectively. And 90% of the requested birth certificates had a tat of less than or equal to one hour and 54 minutes. While 90% of claiming had a tat of less than 46 minutes. Both are significantly different from the expected completion time of two hours and 40 minutes in requesting and one hour in claiming. For most of the procedures of requesting birth certificates, both married and not married parents had almost the same path, except for the procedure when the client presents all the requirements. Not married parents who will be using their pilot need to have a government issued ID, in which some clients have difficulty in preparing, resulting to longer path for the procedure. Main causes of delay were client related factors such as incomplete documents, wrong or misspelled patients' information, and unavailability of the client. The major threat of almost two days of medical legal certificates when the attending physician was available is shorter as compared to the threat of almost three days when the attending physician was unavailable. However, 90% completion, completion time of the requested medical legal certificates when the doctor was available was five days and six days when the attending doctor was unavailable. The median tap when the doctor was available was significantly different from the expected six hours in the citizen's charter. The procedure of retrieving the patient's data and securing the attending physician's signature had the longest tap among all the procedures. For medical certificate, the median tap was two hours, but the 90% completion time was almost two days. The median tap of two hours was not significantly different from the expected tap of five hours. The same with medical legal certificates, retrieval of data and securing the attending physician's signature of medical certificates had the longest stat among the procedures. The main causes of delay for medical legal and medical certificates were process related, in which the unavailability of the doctor, bulk request, and not yet submitted medical chart account for most of the distribution. Before the pandemic, resident physicians were on duty for at least five days a week. However, physicians have different schedules during the pandemic. Their schedules are not fixed and changing most of the time to adapt to the new normal, which made it even harder to secure the signatures. When there are bulk requests, the personnel responsible for securing the signature of the physician had difficult hours. There are days when the encoder of the certificate is also the one who was secure the signature of the attending physician. On the other hand, the charts create a process, especially for medical legal certificates, since the contents of the certificate are time of three hours and 34 minutes. 90% completion time of one day. Medical record, on the other hand, had a medium turnaround time of three hours and 16 minutes and 90% completion time of seven hours. The mission that a confirmed certificate was one hour and 90% was two hours and 30 minutes. The system of confirmed certificate was relatively shorter than the contracts of medical certificate. The mission that a medical certificate is a record and Significant completion time of processing the certificates for processes related, such as small requests, difficult in locating patients' data, and not submitted medical. Next, in completion time of 13 hours, for medical certificates to be signed by the attending physician. The major set of documents requested through our online was three hours and 40 minutes, and the 90% completion time was one day. Compared to the medical documents requested online was designated expected that in the citizen's charter of three hours and 40 minutes. The cost of the processing online requests were press related after such as bulk requests, limited employees, and medical attending physician, and not submitted medical chart. It can be concluded that although the median at of majority of documents and transactions were not significantly different or slower 
As compared to the expected completion time, it is important to look at the 90 percentile or the 90 percent completion time, where certificate transactions were mostly affected by client related factors, while different medical certificates and records were affected by process related factors. These are the recommendations based on the results of the study. Clients requesting birth certificate should be informed of the documents required for the process and should be reminded to always check and verify patient information. Teams are pursuing to remind the hospital wards of the protocol regarding medical charge, particularly after patients discharge. Their physics records there should be passed among the employees in charge to avoid bulk requests. And it is recommended to consider the 90% completion time in revising the citizen's charter that will be applicable for the new normal situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mom, uh, Jenny. Janina Rose Bicol. Uh, now let's move on to the second speaker, which is Dr. Edinburgh B. Abubakar of um, Medical Officer 3 of Sulu Sanitario. The paper is Acceptability of COVID-19 Vaccination Among Healthcare Workers in Sulu Sanitario. Hello, good afternoon. With the numbers rising today, people are now in the crossroads of decision on whether to receive jobs of vaccination or whether not to receive due to different issues. This includes the issues in vaccine itself and personal belief. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Panelists, doctors, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honor and pleasure to present our research abstract, together with our team, I am Edinburgh Abubakar, Medical Officer 3 from Sulu Sanitarium Hospital, would like to present the acceptability of COVID-19 vaccination among healthcare workers in Sulu Sanitarium Hospital. For the background of the study, since the discovery of novel coronavirus last December 2019 in Wuhan, Hubei province of China, it has exponentially increased, in fact, even millions of people worldwide. The Philippine government has enforced numerous public health measures through implementing policies and actions to prevent the spread of the virus, such as vaccination. Healthcare workers being in the front line of care are very vulnerable to contracting the disease. also help to influence general public's decision on in increasing the uptake of vaccination. In this study, the, the researchers would like to determine the acceptability of COVID-19 vaccines among healthcare workers of Sulu Sanitarium. Conceptual framework, our conceptual framework, sorry for the, it, is, it was it's missing in our, in our slides. Now, our conceptual frameworks, uh, it composed of factors that affect the acceptability of COVID-19 vaccination. It includes the contextual belief, the demographics, and for the objective statement of the problem, the research study deals with the acceptability of COVID-19 vaccination among healthcare workers in Sulu Sanitarium Hospital. Specifically, it will answer the following questions. Number one, what is the level of acceptance among the employees of Sulu Sanitarium Hospital on COVID-19 vaccines? Two, is there a significant difference in the level of acceptance among the employees of Sulu Sanitarium Hospital on COVID-19 vaccines when data are grouped according to services, age, and gender? Our methodology in this study, we used a cross-sectional design to stratify randomized sampling was used to collect the data from the 120 respondents through a self-administered survey adapted from a study done in Ghana last April 2020 collected were processed using the SPSS version 21 and were analyzed using paired t-tests for age and gender variable and ANOVA for age and services. For the results in discussion, 
majority of the respondents were on the 20 to 29 age group, which is around 47.5%. And majority of them were female, 55%. The level of acceptance of COVID-19 vaccines based on gender showed significant difference with a p-value of less than 0.05. For the level of acceptability, based on the service and age showed significant difference with a p-value of less than 0.05, implying that all healthcare workers in Sulu Sanitarium Hospital are willing to be vaccinated. Conclusion, the study concludes that employees of Sulu Sanitarium Hospital have a high level of acceptability towards receiving vaccination. Recommendation, the researchers would like to recommend doing a study with a larger population among healthcare workers and a study that measures the relationship of the acceptability of healthcare workers and acceptability of the general population. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. Thank you very much to Dr. Abu Bakar for that presentation. So let's move on to the question and answer. For our uh, presenters, I don't know. I have a question. The ones that I think the long presenter, they the effort to give us this information. The architect, how about next that I know? Attendees, po, if you have any question, please feel free to uh, chat them in the Q and A uh, chat box or sa chat panel din po natin. Thank you, po. Very interesting, po, yung kanilang uh, uh, presentation. Ayun po, po from from Sir Orlando A. Manzano, Homer. Sir Records, po. Despite uh, the current pandemic situation, do you maintain the problem of availability despite the current pandemic situation and the problem of this one's address to Ms. Nicole? Good afternoon. Uh, to answer the question po, mm -hmm. na during pandemic po, um, as you can see as, as a result po, yung legion turnaround time is still within the uh, expected completion time in the citizen's charter. However, there are some um, uh, pieces po na medyo mataas yung turnaround time. And yun po, nabanggit po sa presentation kanina yung mga uh, factors affecting that. And regarding dun po sa availability of signatories, um, still an ano po, uh, discussion since different depart medical departments po with uh, mga doctors, they have different schedules. So what we can do with the records is to communicate directly with the attending physician to ask po kung nasan sila or when they are available or to prove to have po uh, someone to um, countersign their medical certificates po. Thank you po, Ms. Bicol, for the answer. So, Sir Tulando, does that answer your question po? Thank you. For others, po, you may post questions for our presenters. We still have a lot of time. Medyo ahead po tayo sa ano, sa time still po natin. Again po, sa mga bagong dati, Thing po, you, sa mga hindi pa po napag-fill up ng attendance, you may do so. Uh, Ni-resend ko po ulit yung link para po sa attendance po natin. And again, yung Q&A po natin is still open. Ako po yung tinatanong kung may 
Ay, meron akong question. Wala na ho ba? Sigurado kayo? This is um, a very interesting uh, topic po on the medical records. Uh, improving the system in the medical record. Uh, Ma'am, Ma'am Bicol, you, parang your study is uh, pointing at uh, the, the improvement no? cannot be done alone in the uh, HHIM or medical records, but you need uh, the other units to cooperate so that your your um, uh, turnaround time will be improved. So with that situation, uh, how can we improve the systems in the medical records or the HHIM? If we are dependent on the, the participation of the other units. Ito po, may isa po. Sige po, Michael. Go ahead po. For, for the question po. Um, yes. Yes. Um, we're, ano po, we're on the process of presenting our results to the other departments and other units. We're communicating with them po to, prov to have a solution. So for now po, what we can do is really communicate with them. Example po for the signatories, we are asking directly them for their schedules, the schedules of their doctors since different medical departments po, iba-iba sila ng uh, schedule or adapting sa uh, COVID pandemic. And then with the medical charts, the not yet submitted medical charts, if wala pa po sa, sa many records and there is a patient requesting for it, we call directly po to the station or the medical board. For now po, yun pa lang po yung communication with them, pa lang po yung pwede namin uh, gawin. Since yun lang po yung control ng medical records po. May question? Yes po, meron po tayo lang isang from, tanong po po. Tayong isang Ma'am Teresa. Tanong po po from Ma'am Teresa Uralios. Are they still doing the face-to-face -face interview in filling up information such as in... Yes, Ma'am Teresa. Yes, Ma'am Teresa. Yes, Ma'am Teresa. Yes, Ma'am Teresa. still doing face-to-face -face interview in filling up information sa birth certificate, especially birth certificate and so request for with medical certificate. There's still face-to-face -face interviews for. Yes, um, uh, face-to-face parang uh, HHIM staff. Ah, uh, kasi marami po ata sa kanilang nagko-COVID. <laughs> Patunay po na nag-face-to-face -face sila. Okay, wala na po bang other questions? Uh, wala na po tayong questions? Ay, ano, meron pa isa? Yes po, meron. For Ms. Nicole, do you accept online requests for medical certificates and other records? Yes po, we accept online requests po for medical certificates and records. Pero for the releasing, they have to come physically po for the uh, sa office. Due to data privacy, we, we need to make sure that we are releasing the uh, records and certificate to the patient po or dun po sa authorized representative. And for follow-up question po is, how do you process the payment? Uh, during I mean, uh, release of the meds, medical certificates or the documents, physical po silang pupunta to uh, para po makuha yung ni-request nila. Requesting lang po yung online pero releasing is pupunta pa rin po sila sa office. Tapos doon po magbabayad ng for yun po. Thank you daw po. Sabi po ni Ma'am Maria Teresa Abola po. So with that, maybe we can 
uh, close the session with uh, synthesis of manga. Okay, uh, moving on to the synthesis for the part two session on hospital system improvement and operation efficiency. So once again, I would like to thank our presenters for sharing their efforts on hospital system improvement and operation efficiency. Ms. Rose R. Bicol of the Tangas Medical Center presented the paper on turnaround time of medical records and medical certificates. And it is very timely presentation because the DOH is in coordination with PSA in having uh, PSA on how to improve the registration of the birth certificates because apparently there are still problems on the uh, registration of the birth certificates among uh, hospitals. So she also discussed that the improvement of the turnaround time for the medical records requires system approach, not only the medical records or HHIM is responsible for the improvement of the turnaround time. Uh, the processes are, uh, are affected by the other units, especially the doctors, the attendees, uh, physicians, uh, their availability, and of course, their completion of uh, uh, medical records. So they are also affected by the situation of the increasing requests that they get you know, from uh, the patients and their families. Dr. Edinburgh uh, Abubakar of Sulu Sanitarium presented a timely topic on acceptability of COVID-19 vaccination among healthcare workers in Sulu Sanitarium using a cross-sectional design through stratified randomized sampling. His conclusion showed that the employees of Sulu Sanitarium had a high acceptability rate of 100%. A good thing that the, the positive uh, uh, result of his uh, study was 100%, or else as a DOH um, health facility, that would have been a problem. So, uh, mababa po yung acceptability rate niya. So, this afternoon session showed us that each unit in the hospital can work towards improving uh, its system. So we can fulfill the promise of a better health outcome and access to quality healthcare services. So I hope we will uh, be able to have uh, more venues where we can discuss your improvement initiatives. Happy National uh, Week, National Hospital Week celebration to all of you. Uh, tomorrow, let's move on. Tomorrow po, meron po tayong another session. At what time? So, at 1, 1 to 2 uh, p.m. So, meron po tayong uh, session. It's a TV. Uh, PH sa Facebook po. May live streaming din tayo. And then, uh, may part one, may part two. Okay, so, hope we can again uh, see, more, see more or see more uh, attendees uh, sa, sa ating session kasi tukulitin natin pagkakataon. And I would like to remind you that uh, this is also a uh, an, uh, uh, contest. <laughs> uh, contest, no? And uh, uh, e, uh, the winners will be uh, announced in the closing program. So, kailangan po natin kayo at 3.40 to 5 p.m. tomorrow because uh, hopefully lahat po nung nag-present will be there uh, so that they will be acknowledged. And the winners will also be there para ho uh, ma-announce yung inyong mga 
recognition para sa inyo. So, see you po uh, tomorrow. And uh, I hope this uh, session inspired the others who have attended to also do uh, improvements no? na pwede hong gawin. And gawan din ho ninyo ng paper so that mas marami po tayong documentation. And uh, uh, be assured that your recommendations no, will be considered sa aming pong standard and policy development po uh, program dito sa aming health, uh, health facility development bureau. So, Pao, meron ka pang sasabi sa mga? Uh, with that, po, thank you very, very much for attending the uh, first National Hospital Week Research Forum, Part 1, and parallel sessions under the Hospital Operations Track. And I hope to see you, thank you po. all again tomorrow. And sing plenary din po natin. Maraming maraming salamat po. Good day ahead and ingat po.